So you might like to turn to Proverbs this time, to Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25 will be there shortly. So as we pick up in Proverbs, today we're looking at the wisdom of humility. Humility is wise. So if you like, it's one of those many jigsaw puzzles as we cast our minds back to the beginning of this series. One of those jigsaw puzzle pieces that make up the full picture of wisdom. Wisdom is incomplete without humility. And we see perfectly the picture of wisdom, of course, in the face of Jesus Christ. Humility is a beautiful thing. We do like it when we see it. I appreciated David Beckham when he queued for hours with the general public to pay his respects to the Queen lying in state. He didn't claim any VIP status, but put him at the front of the queue. No, he joined the back of the queue. He chose the humble way, and no doubt enhanced his reputation as a result. On the contrary, we don't like pride when we see it. And pride has been manifested massively this week as the owner of a submersible resists the instruction time and time again that what he's doing is not safe. And so he and four others have perished. We don't like pride and arrogance like that. So we're going to look at the ways of humility and the result of humility this morning from Proverbs and we shall see its beauty. A glory that's perfectly seen in Jesus. I don't think anyone's coming in. (laughs) So humility, as we leave from Davenport Road this morning, humility is something for us to hunger after. Something for us to embrace. So firstly, the ways of humility... Just two headings. Humility chooses the lowly position. And secondly, humility chooses the listening position. So first of all, humility chooses the lowly position. Proverbs 25, verses 6 and 7. Do not exalt yourself in the king's presence and do not claim a place amongst great men. It is better for him, the king, to say to you, come up here than for him to humiliate you before a nobleman. And Jesus himself took that very proverb as the basis of one of his parables in Luke 14, it was the parable of a wedding feast where Jesus says, when you are invited, take the lowest place and leave it to the host to move you to a better place. So Proverbs says, don't claim for yourself a superior place and then be humiliated. And Jesus says, take the lowest place and then be exalted. In Philippians 2, we read, in humility, consider others better than yourselves. It doesn't say, in humility, pretend that others are better than yourself. To consider there is to regard them as better. It is a genuine regarding. And that is the beauty of humility. Practically, 
don't claim a superior place. I used to hear many, many conversations in the tea room of the pharmacy of the Q QMC in Nottingham. Very common conversations which went like this. Somebody would be sounding forth, complaining about or running down a colleague. And without saying it, the implication is that they would never do such a thing. They would never say such a thing themselves. Such talk has self-exaltation at its heart. Claiming a superior place. But it's ugly. And Proverbs says to us, don't. So what about practically? Take the lowest place, as Jesus says. Now there was plenty of humble jobs on offer at the recent lifting and ladders a few Saturdays ago here. The lowest place would be to offer to clear out the drains, which haven't been done for ages. It's foul, it's dirty, and very smelly. The hands that went up for that job were humble hands. Because in offering themselves for that service, all the rest of us are spared the delight of the drains. The job is unattractive, but the humility is beautiful. The lowly position is the serving position, the position that looks to serve the interests of others. When 12 disciples argued amongst themselves as to who was the greatest, Jesus said this, whoever wants to be first among you must be the servant or the slave of all. He said to those 12, for even the Son of Man the glorious one with all the power and all the authority, the Son of Man, did not come to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. His service was the giving of his life, looking only to the best interests of you and me. our desperate need to be saved from sin. Do notice in Proverbs 25, verse 6, the phrase, in the king's presence. Because that is where you and I live our lives. We live our lives before him as his subjects. So self-exalting and claiming any greatness above others has no place in the presence of the one who so humbled himself that he gave himself for us. Only humility is fit for the presence of that king. So humility, first of all, chooses the lowly place. It chooses to be like Jesus, which is beautiful. <coughs> Secondly, under the ways of humility, humility chooses the listening place or the listening position. That is both in the taking of advice and the heeding of correction. Humility seeks and takes advice. Proverbs 12 and verse 15. The way of a fool seems right to him, but a wise man listens to advice. A wise man seeks advice. And then turn over to Proverbs 13, verse 10. Pride only breeds quarrels, 
but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Humility not only seeks advice, it takes advice. And the first, of all, the first thing about humility here is it recognises there is wisdom in others. Pride's our enemy here. Pride would say, advice? What do you need advice for? Yeah, you've got it covered, haven't you? You're, you've got it sorted. But we might say, isn't there a danger in just taking whatever advice we're given? Well, yes, of course there is. It matters to whom we go for advice. Just look at verse 20 of chapter 13. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. So who are the wise? Who will give us sound advice? Well, the whole core message of the book of Proverbs is this. Fear the Lord, because that's the essence of wisdom. So humility seeks the advice of the godly, the truthful, the honest, the trustworthy. Those people whom you can see fear the Lord and love the Lord and love to do his ways. So if we are wanting God's wisdom concerning difficult circumstances, at work, at home, wherever, concerning decisions or plans where there seems to be many options, or in any of life's complexities or any of life's mess, then humility seeks and takes godly advice. And when humility seeks and takes advice, better decisions are made, better options are chosen, better words are spoken, better actions are taken, and situations are handled better. It's the beauty of humility. Humility doesn't just take advice, it also heeds correction. Proverbs 15, verse 32. He who ignores discipline despises himself. But whoever heeds correction gains understanding. Pride, of course, hates correction. Humility, in its beauty, heeds it. This is a really tough one. Because if you're like me, when some correction is given, my first reaction is not the beauty of humility but the ugliness of pride. I'll quickly come up with reasons, as many as possible, to show that the correction wasn't fair or even right. That verse, verse 32, tells me that that attitude of mine does me no favours. In fact, it puts it more strongly. I despise myself. I treat myself with contempt. When we ignore godly correction, we forfeit the intended benefit to our loss. There's an opportunity here to gain understanding and to be wiser next time. And the humble will see that and take it. Humility lets correction be a positive experience. Humility allows the making of mistakes from which we will learn. 
So when the godly source offers correction, we can be confident that their desire is our best interests. How can we embrace such humility? By simply, deliberately submitting ourselves to godly correction. To those that we know have our best interests at heart when they give it. Our pastors, our spouse, our Christian friend. Remember Proverbs 27, 6, wounds from a friend can be trusted. So Proverbs puts the taking of advice and the heeding of correction into one verse, Proverbs 19, verse 20. Proverbs 19, 20. The position of listening to advice and heeding correction in one verse. Listen to advice and accept instruction, and in the end, you will be wise. Above all, the listening place needs to be humbly at the feet of Jesus. Humility listens to the Lord. And if you were to read the early chapters of Proverbs, Solomon is longing for all his sons to be good listeners of his wisdom, but more than hearing only to put that into practice. We are sons and daughters of our King Jesus. And humble listening to him will mean obedience to what he says. Jesus, when he summarized the whole of the Sermon on the Mount, said this to his disciples, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house upon a rock. We are to humbly build our lives on what the Lord says. Not listening and doing what the world says or what our selfish hearts might say. The obedience of Jesus to his Father is our example supreme. In Gethsemane, agonizing before the cross, he prayed, not my will, but yours be done. That prayer led on to his obedience to death. And his obedience is our salvation. Humility listens to the Lord. It both hears and obeys. And so we are to submit ourselves to the authority of God's word. It is for us to say, for me, God's word rules. James 1 says, humbly accept the word planted in you. Don't merely listen to the word, but do what it says. That's the humility, to do what it says. To be shaped by God's word will make us more like Jesus, and that's the beauty of humility. So the ways of humility are to choose the lowly position and to choose the listening position. Let's climax with the result of humility. We're familiar with this everyday proverb, pride comes before a fall. You can turn it up, chapter 16 and verse 18. Pride goes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. But what does humility come before? What's the result of humility? Well, Proverbs 18, verse 12. Before his downfall, a man's heart is proud, but humility comes before honour. Isn't that strange? The result of humility is honour, the very thing that humility wouldn't seek. 
The Lord is saying, he honours the humble. He'll see to it. Proverbs 3.34 says, He, the Lord, gives grace to the humble. And James and Peter quote that proverb in their letters in the New Testament. And they both make it clear what that grace means. And it is to be lifted up, exalted, honoured. The Lord gives lifting up, exaltation, honour to the humble. James says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Peter says the same and adds, in due time. Humility will often be honoured by the Lord in this life. For that is the creator's order of things. But Peter's in due time can mean that if not now, it will be in the life to follow. I'd like you to meet humble Joan Willett. She's 106. On King Charles' official birthday, that's celebrated by the Trooping of the Colour a few Saturdays ago, announcement is made of the names that the king would honour, usually in recognition of some service given. And on the king's list is this name of Joan Willett, she'd raise £60,000 for the British Heart Foundation. And the king awarded her a British Empire medal. Listen to her reaction. I feel so very honoured and flattered. But I don't think I've done anything special. The King of England has honoured the humble Joan Willett. It's her name that's in the national papers. The King has recognised her humble serving to the British Heart Foundation in a way she could never have imagined. Now it's one thing to be honoured by the King of England, but quite another to be honoured by the King of Kings. Whom does the King of Kings honour? The humble, the lowly in spirit, those who live the ways of humility. Isn't it amazing that King Jesus, King of the whole universe, whose reign is eternal, whose kingdom will never fail, is pleased and will honour humility? King Charles has to receive nominations for his honours list. But King Jesus sees our hearts all day, every day. And he knows where the honours are due. And in due time, his recognition comes. He gives grace to the humble. He lifts them up. He honours them. He exalts them. What grace that is. So what will the Lord's honouring of the humble look like? Well, an angel of the Lord came to Mary and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. You have found favour with God. And here's the honour. You will be with child and give birth to a son. The Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Mary's response of praise to God, her Saviour, begins like this. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. 
From now on, all generations will call me blessed. He has lifted up the humble. The Lord's honouring of Mary's humility is a combination of three R's. Reputation, respect, and responsibility. What a reputation for all generations to call you blessed. And what respect that they should do so. And what responsibility to be the mother of the Son of God. And in the same way, the honour of humility for us will be those three R's in some way or other Reputation, respect, responsibility, both here and in the coming kingdom. The greatest humbling of self was that of Jesus Christ. The Son of God allowed his creatures to mock him, insult him, spit on him, flog him, and kill him. And to this greatest humbling of all is given the greatest honour of all. Therefore, God has exalted him to the highest place and given him the name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The highest responsibility, he is now head over all things. The highest reputation, his is the name above all names. The highest respect, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. We like humility when we see it, and so does God. He bestows honour upon our humility. So the wisdom of humility, the beautiful ways of humility, choosing the lowest place that serves all others, Choosing the listening place, the taking of godly advice, the heeding of godly correction that gains understanding. And the listening obedience to the word of God, making us more like Jesus. It is these ways of humility that result in honour. For humility comes before honour. And we will be wise to hunger for the beauty of humility. For to hunger for that is to hunger for Jesus himself. The perfect example. The most beautiful, glorious, humble one. Our Saviour. So we're going to sing, to finish, a song which has as its theme the humble service of Jesus. It's going to bring together some of the strands that we've been thinking about. From heaven you came as a helpless babe. Entered our world, but your glory veiled not to be served but to serve and give your life that we might live. Our humility follows his. So let's stand to sing.